Welcome back. Now more from Utopia. When early settlers killed off the mountain lions, bears, and wolves, they eliminated the apex predators that kept deer and elk moving across the landscape, and not just in one spot. And because this area is a national forest with picnic grounds and cabins nearby, hunting is prohibited. And it is no joke that the deer learn that very rapidly, where it's safe and where it's not. Imagine if somebody was hunting you on an annual basis, you would find the safe place. And so deer harbor in here among some of these, um, these recreational cabins and they uh, are in and around the road here and they know that it's safe from hunting and uh, it becomes a refuge for them. And they've become acclimated to that environment and they, uh, they eat every single young sprout that comes up. Is there a solution? What can be done to save Pando? We've seen some signs of hope at Pando through our research. Uh, this area that's fenced and we did some treatments, we had a fantastic response. It's about 15 acres out of 106 acres. We fenced an area about twice that size above the highway and we've had a pretty poor response, unfortunately. And it's clear that animals are getting into that fenced area and continue to browse. I think they'll jump over it or under it. We're not even sure how the mule deer get in there. And we know that it's not cattle getting into that fenced area above. So. Um, they're magicians, I think. Somehow they get in there. The 2013 fence below the road has worked well in protecting pando saplings from the browsers. However, more fencing that followed in 2014 has not worked as well. After regularly spotting deer within the 2014 fenced area, as well as finding deer scat and recently browsed suckers, the Forest Service has worked to shore up any weaknesses in the perimeter. Though some saplings have survived, recent data demonstrates that most in this area are still being browsed by deer. There's a visceral pleasure in seeing the gold in the, in the fall and, and hearing that whispering uh, leaves quaking. We know people have great pride in that. We know we want to see Aspen around for a while, but we need science to back that up. We need to understand that and we need to make moves that are right and we need to monitor what we do so that we can track whether what we think is right is actually right. Saving Pando doesn't just mean saving Pando. It could mean creating the model to protect all aspen forests throughout the Rocky Mountains and the world. And because of the high level of biodiversity in aspen forests, their preservation is critical to the preservation of many other species as well. Thus, Pando may be seen as a mirror, a reflection of humanity's ability to live in balance with our environment. If aspen die out, all those species depended on it, plants and animals, and there's a large catalog of those species. That would be the same if, if I was in Mexico where aspen grow, if I was in New Mexico, if I was in Utah, or if I was in Alberta. Now we're gonna connect uh, the aspen of North America to the aspen that go all the way across Eurasia. And these are the two most widespread tree species in the world. And they have very high biodiversity and some of the same issues. Overabundance of herbivores as we've eliminated, as we've eliminated predators from these systems that not only keep numbers in check, but as importantly, they keep animals moving so they don't sit in one area for a long period of time and eat every single sprout. In 2014, the Utah State Legislature, with the governor's signature, named the quaking aspen the Utah State Tree. This designation seems particularly meaningless without the actions to protect the species. This is especially true of Pando, the granddaddy of them all.
If you are interested in visiting Pando, the spring and fall are the best times. Wait until the snow melts, but get there before it gets too hot. Autumn colors against the white trunks of the trembling giant make for some incredible scenery. If you would like to learn more or help Paul's efforts, visit www.western-aspen-alliance.org. Stay tuned now for more Utopia after these messages from our sponsors.